Somebody might say, you know, when I got saved, when I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't have this, this emotional experience, you know, I wasn't crying, you know, I see other people when they get saved and they're just crying and they're broken and, and you know, when they get saved, oh, there's so much joy in their life. To me, you know, it wasn't like that for me. I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't really feel anything too strongly. Uh, do I really believe? And, and this is in my own life. This was my experience. You know, I never questioned whether or not I believed because of how I felt, because I, I've never really been much of an ex emotional person. So for me, salvation was more an intellectual decision than it was an emotional decision. So when I believed on Jesus Christ, to me, I just wanted answers. I wanted it to make sense. And to me, if it made sense to me, then, you know, if I was on my way to hell, then that's what gave me the emotion because I'm like, well, if hell is real, I don't want to go there. You know, I don't want, I know I deserve hell. Uh, did I feel bad about it? Yeah, but did I feel really bad about it? No, I was more, maybe it was more a selfish desire because I, I wanted to preserve myself from going to hell and I realized that this is my only way out and I decided to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because I did not want to go to hell. <clears throat> So somebody might not have this emotional experience. Does that mean then that they do not genuinely believe? You know, and there's a lot of emphasis on um, what they call like sorrow and conviction. Um, you know, you hear this about a lot where they say, you know, you have to be sorrowful and you have to, the Holy Spirit has to convict you and then you believe on, on Jesus Christ. You know, sorrow and conviction might um, make somebody more likely to believe. First Peter 5, 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For, because God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So we see that principle there of if you're proud, if you're prideful, God might resist you. And generally, God is resisting, and people even who are proud resist God. So if you have sorrow and conviction, if you uh, humble yourself, yeah, you know, more likely you are going to believe on Jesus Christ. But does that mean it's a requirement to believe on Jesus Christ? Because you can believe on Jesus Christ even if you don't have the level of humility that people think you need to have. Um, let's go to John 8. Now on this issue on, of conviction, you know, I just want to mention this because people will say that, you know, the Holy Spirit needs to convict you and, and then only you can believe on Jesus Christ. Now nowhere in the Bible does the Bible ever talk about the Holy Spirit convicting. The, the one time the word convict appears in the Bible, it appears as convicted and it's in John 8 chapter, uh, verse 9. It says, and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. Because the verse that they go to to show that the Holy Spirit convicts doesn't actually say that. It says here in John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. So you're not, con you're not reproved of sin because you're living such a sinful life and you need to be convicted of your sins to turn from your sins. You're being reproved of sin because you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're condemned already because you have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. So it says here that he will reprove the word of sin. He reproving somebody of sin is telling somebody that they're wrong, telling somebody that they're in sin Convicting you of sin is what makes you guilt, what tells you that you are guilty of breaking it. It makes you feel that guilt. And that is not the job of the Holy Spirit, but your conscience bears witness of the law of God. And then your conscience, which is the knowledge of the God's law in you, convicts you and, and gives you that guilty feeling. So when it comes to conviction, it's not a work of the Holy Ghost. I guess it stems from the Holy Ghost because the word spoken by the Holy Ghost is what the conscience bears witness to and uses in order to make you feel guilty or not. Um, but it's your conscience that convicts you. Um, now, why am I saying this? Well, because, you know, your conviction 
is not whether or not you believe or not. Your conviction is a measure of your guilt, right? So conviction is a measure of your guilt. It's not determining whether or not you have faith. Let's look at this verse in... Um, oh, I wonder if I was going to turn there or it was going to be later. Yeah, I'll get to it in the next point. But, you know, conviction is a measure of your guilt. It's not uh, determining whether or not you have faith. And, you know, if somebody's crying and they have tears, that equals emotion. That does not equal faith because you can have faith without having the emotion and the crying and the tears. And, you know, how you feel before you get saved, you know, this, your emotion, it, it's arbitrary, isn't it? It's arbitrary and relative. Because if you need to have this sorrow and conviction in order to believe on Jesus Christ, then your next logical question is, well, how sorry and how convicted do I need to feel until I can believe on Jesus Christ? And there's no answer to that. So if somebody says you have to have sorrow and conviction, it's, it's probably this arbitrary level that cannot be measured. So how could you ever know that you believe if you have to have some level of sorrow and conviction which cannot be measured? You don't even know uh, whether you have enough sorrow and conviction. 